All right. The rule still stands. We we flirted with, you know, kind of breaking the rules earlier today. But if you see us, there's good news or bad news. We come with really good news if you're a K-State fan out there. Probably really bad news if you're an Arkansas Razorback, but uh, you're only a, watching this if you're a glutton for punishment because <laughs> Jerome Tang is returning to K-State. He has turned down the job with Arkansas, and he will be back with the Wildcats for the upcoming season. It will be his third year with K-State after a hot and heavy pursuit that went on from Arkansas. And, I mean, I'll, Drew, I'll let you kind of speak here and give – your thought on maybe the emotions that you had uh, throughout the time that we were recording this morning, discussing all the rumors and everything circulating to the point where, you know, we get the word, Hey, Jerome Tang is coming back. Like it, it felt like five different days and one from the time that we recorded this morning to this afternoon when Chris Beard declined the job at Arkansas to where we are now. Like I would say that I was probably at my lowest as soon as Chris Beard declined the job because I was so in the zone of, okay, this is Chris Beard's job to lose. Like it probably won't get past him. And then when it got past him, it was like, oh crap. Okay. Like, you know that they're going to put a full court press on Jerome Tang. And then it was probably like two or three o'clock this afternoon is probably, probably the peak lowest for me. And then you started to hear things were getting better and things were getting better. And then we get the official news about like 25 minutes ago at this point. And it's like, this has been the longest day. The, the second day I think that would compare would be like the Colin Klein day. Cause that was, there's just so much uh, that went on that day. Yeah. I would, I would probably liken it more to, when we were on Snyder watch uh, at towards the end of his tenure there. And it was like, okay, is it coming? To, Cause I can remember this is crazy. It was, it was a Friday night. Uh, we had just wrapped up doing the game on K man and uh, former KSO alum, Matt Hall was in studio with us that day. And me, John Kurtz and Matt Hall, we were staying in the K man studio after the show had ended. And we were going to wait there in case it went down <laughs> after the show and be there. And we probably stayed for two, three hours afterwards waiting on it. Uh, we ordered pizza shuttle to the K-Man studio <laughs> and had it in there and waited and it didn't. And then I think the next two days I spent time outside veneer. Uh, John would send me a text, but Hey, you know, people are out there. We should probably have you go over there. So I did. And then, uh, you know, finally there was that word on, on Sunday. So that was, that's the one that I would probably compare to it, but that was even different. Like, even though there was maybe some questions and you think it's up in the air right now, that was, we knew that it was ultimately going to end in moving on. Like there was going to be yeah. some way happen. It was just when it was going to, this was one of those things where you don't want to move on if you're K state and be in that position. And you really don't know what the outcome is going to be. I, you know, Gray Hauser uh, tweeted at me earlier today and was like, you know, what percentage would you put it at? He's staying, he's leaving. And, at that time, like that was uh, around lunchtime, probably an hour or so before Beard was like, hey, I'm staying in Oxford. And I responded, I just said, 60, he stays, 40, he goes. Because at that point, like anything can happen in these coaching searches. It can yeah. change quickly. We know this. So I was like, hey, you know, I, I think he's more likely than not going to stay. But if he's number two and it's a thin margin and there, you know, was some news out there that maybe Beard was going to stay – anything can kind of go down from there and then beard turns it down. And it's like, that's 60, 40. I, it's, it's out the window now. Uh, but by the end, the way things worked out, that probably ends up being about the right percentage. And I think there was probably a chunk of the day where Jerome Tang probably thought he was going to be the next head coach at Arkansas and leave K state. Yeah. I, I think that you're exactly right. That there probably was a point where, Jerome Tang thought that he was going to leave. And then there was a larger portion of where it sounded like he was going to stay. And it, it really sounds like everybody loves Gene Taylor, but I don't think that he gets enough love. And he deserves a lot of love for what he did to get Jerome Tang to stay. And I'd, I'd even add that you should give a lot of love to the K-State basketball staff because I, I think that a lot of them liked 
or uh, really like Manhattan and really wanted to stay. And that also could have helped impact this as well. I mean, you, you saw Dream Dowling was right on it like he always is, posting about uh, Jerome Tang staying. And yet you just you sigh, breathe a sigh of relief, but like you have to think that in the back of your mind that 365 days from now or shorter, we're probably going through this again. Well, and, and that's the thing is now here's, here's what we know is it was really close that he was taking the Arkansas job and in your head, now you have the baseline that the minimum job that he would leave for appears to be a job like Arkansas. So whatever in people's minds that is, put that there. And then every job that goes ahead of that. And I think it's significant that K-State was able to get him to stay. I think there's a lot of different factors. Obviously, most of the time in these circumstances, it means that Jerome Tang is going to get another raise. He probably deserves it. I mean, if you're this sought after and thought of highly in, in your field, you probably deserve to be compensated like that. And if you're a K-State fan, some of you might scoff at, man, we're going to pay a basketball coach what? Because I think people are pointing out Musselman's contract uh, every year was like four point two million at Arkansas. The most yeah. on the most recent deal that Jerome Tang had done, it was going to get up to three point six. But if you're able to match that, you're playing in real college athletics right now. You're playing the game if you're K State, and that's a good thing. But now you just have to hope that it's enough to kind of thwart away everybody else moving forward, and know that Jerome Tang is not it's not as locked in as people might have thought. I think that after year one and the the way that Jerome Tang has kind of galvanized the fan base and got them to buy in, he's probably got a lot of people that thought, hey, he's here. He's he's going to be one of us now. Not necessarily that case. You have to be aware of that. But I do think that this is at least a positive and you can kind of calm yourself down moving forward that the list of jobs that Jerome Tang would take is a lot smaller now, or at least we know it to be a lot smaller after he turns down Arkansas and decides to come back to K-State. And this ties back into what I said earlier today, more so on the side of what his assistants, you know, their response and everything. And I think the role that his staff and people around him played in him coming back to K-State, I think Jerome Tang had people around him and probably he himself started to think, I can make K-State the job that I want it to be. And that should ultimately be the outcome here because with as hungry as Jerome Tang is for wanting to win and get back to being a national champion like he was at Baylor, and he wants to do it as a head coach, if he didn't think he could do it at K-State, he would have taken the job today no matter what his staff or anybody else around him said or whatever the money that came in from you know K-State was. But he he's, even if you want to be a little bit, you know, I don't know if upset is the right word, but disappointed or, or hurt in some ways that it was this close to happening, Jerome Tang leaving, I think you should be able to take some solace in the fact that Jerome Tang still believes in K-State, and he still, in some part of his heart, wants to be in Manhattan. Yeah, I mean, I, I would even add that if he didn't think that he could reach the pinnacle at K-State like he did at Baylor, I don't think that he takes the job at K-State to begin with. Like, I, I think that he truly believes that he can win a national championship at K-State. And, I mean, moving forward, because now we, we get through this, and, like, you you think about next year's team, they're still going to be going after transfers pretty hard. Doug McDaniel is a big, big addition. And I feel like we can really start to talk more about Doug McDaniel being at K-State now, knowing that Jerome Tang is going to be there. So you, you look forward to what next year's team can be because if you firmly believe what we believe, that the NIL is much better, they're getting a much better response in the transfer portal, it's looking like next year will be very, very fun. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a great point now with where everything stands and how things look and and kind of where we can move on from this point and you know, I there, there's a few more things that we can hit on on drum tank sticking, and then now it's we can go, you know, pedal to the metal or metal to the pedal, however you want to say it. I, I'm not a car guy, so my uh, whatever is uh, my my <laughs> language there is messed up. Also, it's just been a long and stressful day. It uh, has been four different days in one because it's not just the fact like, look, I'm I'm not going to 
you know, I'm not going to be Mr. High and Mighty about the the profession that we're in and and say that like I'm totally unbiased. I think most of my takes are rooted in being unbiased, but my feelings are still very biased about K State. Yes. I, my parents went to K State. I grew up a K State fan. I I went to K State. Like I want what's best for Kansas State. And what's best for Kansas State is for Jerome Tang to be the basketball coach right now. And so there there is some emotional like this was a draining day in that fact. It all I mean, also I was at home with a seven month old baby all day that just wanted to cry. So that probably contributed to it. But it long day, like you said, and I think it, at some point, like people had to start to reason with themselves, like, what is the move? How how do we respond if if Jerome Tang moves on? And I think ultimately people probably wrestled with that and they're probably thankful that they don't have to deal with it. And ultimately Jerome Tang did choose to stay at K state. I, I want that to really sink in for people here. Yes. That it's not just that it's not like by default, he stayed at K state. Like it, it, it got it, very close in some ways you should feel better about the fact that the job got to Jerome Tang where the offer was there for him and Arkansas wanted him badly. And he still turned it down to stay at K state, no matter what it took, what reasoning it took to get him there. Jerome Tang had a tie to K-State that he didn't want to leave for an Arkansas job that is, at the very least, uh, a little bit better than K-State in terms of how it's nationally perceived currently. But, like, I'm – and I may, maybe some people will think this is biased. I think this is an unbiased thing to say. Uh, there is certainly an avenue and way in my head that I can paint the picture and say that K-State can be a better job than Arkansas by the time that Jerome Tang leaves here. And I think he understands that. And so now you can move forward and see kind of what's coming down. And obviously uh, made the, the joke earlier, uh, Michael Brown Jones, the UNC Greensboro transfer that's highly sought after. He named his, his final three earlier today. And two of the teams were K-State and Ole Miss. And uh, I jokingly said to UND, why, oh, he's going to be a Razorback. Uh, well, now it's actually a legit head-to-head. -head. Let's see how it ends up playing out there between – uh, K State and Ole Miss and I guess Pitt is in the mix there as well. Uh, so I mean, any any final thoughts on Jerome Tang before we can move into the big picture stuff now and really how significant and huge it is for K State uh, to have him going into next season? Because we'll we'll paint the picture, but it would have been a very different feeling going into yeah. next year and the next couple of years if you were looking for a head coach on April fifth. Yeah, uh, this kind of goes into like we try to be unbiased but at the same time we the two of us especially are just so deeply rooted in k-state i can't i can't tell you the amount of texts that i either sent to people or people sent me asking about all of this so i, I can't imagine what your phone was like too yeah. but it was like people that hadn't texted me in probably like two or three months or texting me and being like hey what do you know and i'm like this is what i know it may or may not happen. So like we, we try to be as unbiased as we can, but like at the same time, like the, the number one thought that kept going through my head was like, and we'll touch on this in the big picture stuff is it, drone Ting leaves what players stay. And like, that was the one thing that I kept getting hung up on is like, if he was to leave the next coach would have just would have had such an uphill climb. Yeah, that that's so, uh, as, as people know, uh, RIP Alec Bussey, uh, not dead. Still talk to him. He, uh, he, he called me in the middle of the day and talked to him for like an hour. And I think in some ways he wanted to, he kind of wanted the thrill of what was going on with, uh, <laughs> with like a coaching search and, and dancing on that line where he starts bringing up Brad Underwood for his alma mater at Illinois and like, Oh, well, what if, you know, all this, and he, he's bringing stuff up and I'm telling him like, I just don't know like what you do at this point in time because he's throwing out names like that guy's not going to bring anybody in here and you're just going to have to roll out a bunch of scrubs. And like if you're hiring a coach at this point in the season, or, I don't know that you're going to be able to field a competitive roster next year. Yeah. And so then you're already starting, you know, with one arm tied behind your back because you're basically going into the next year and you're coming off of a crappy year and all you have to rely on is, hey, we, we got money in IL to get to you. 
And so and, and that's not and, even, that wasn't even guaranteed to be for the next coach and, either. And that's the thing too. Like the NIL pool, which we have an understanding is probably much larger than it was last season for K state. That's not going to be the same case for somebody not named Jerome Tang, because you're not going to bring in an unproven guy, especially somebody that would probably come from a level that's never, you know, experienced the, the prestige and level you'd be at with a big 12 job you're not just going to blindly give them that much. Like it's, you're going to have to prove yourself. So, and you're right about not having the same guys that would have been around. Like a handful of these guys would have undoubtedly probably followed Jerome Tang to Arkansas. Number one, that should be an indicator to people that this roster that he has is not that far off from being really good because the talent is there that Jerome Tang would have wanted to take some of these guys with him you would have had a guy like David Castillo coming in that in all likelihood probably ends up at Arkansas. Why would you not? Or at the very you know, best is open reopening his recruitment. And so you have to fight off other schools. So there were a lot of things that could have played in this and really messed up K-State moving forward. And instead, you get some serious energy and momentum with what can come next because you already have Doug McDaniel and there's a foundation there and we know that there's backing and support to go out and get really what you need to be successful next season and not just a way that it's let's get back to the NCAA tournament. Jerome Tang and this staff is now getting the support, getting at least close to it. I don't know if it's fully there yet that they want and believe that they need to win a national championship. And this team that is put on the court next season for K-State, it's not just let's get back to the NCAA tournament. Goal number one is going to be let's compete in the Big 12 and try and win this thing against Houston or Baylor or Iowa State or KU. And then let's get to the tournament and make some hay again. Oh, I was even going to say, I, I, I'm not as concerned about competing for the Big 12 because I'm of the opinion that it's just so hard to walk the line of, do you, would you rather be really good in the regular season or the NCAA tournament? Where I would say that their goal is probably to make the second weekend of the NCAA tournament more than Big 12 play. But I mean, obviously, every it's all the same. But making the second weekend again is probably one of the number one goals. And I think that winning the national championship is something that they realistically think that they can do. And when you get somebody like Doug McDaniel, you're in the top three for uh, Michael Brown Jones, who's a really, really highly thought of transfer. You have uh, other top 10, top 20 players in the portal that K-State's really in on. You, You think that you could potentially parlay Doug McDaniel into getting one of the best portal classes in the country, at least on paper. And and it's a very possible scenario because everything that you keep hearing and that we keep saying is that the coaches are feeling more comfortable with navigating the portal this year. They they have a lot more NIL backing. And, And I think that part of the comfort level is just that they know what to do in Manhattan now and at K state now, because this is year three for everybody. I mean, I had one of my friends text me today uh, while I was kind of like down in the dumps and was like talking about like, okay, like this is something that could potentially happen. Like, like just be prepared. And he brought up that like, it's very rare. And it is that case. It hasn't had any staff turnover outside of uh, Kevin Sutton leaving for uh, Mount Vert Academy, but there hasn't really been a lot of uh, staff turnover. So you're getting a lot of them are more ingrained in Manhattan and and ingrained in K-State now. So I think that you're going to see between that and the transfer portal and the NIL, you're you're probably looking at a perfect storm for a really good 2024-25 team. Yeah, absolutely. And I think to tie it back in, like that's where you end up going and saying probably why Jerome Tang stayed in a lot of ways is because obviously he has his personal pull and his reasoning to stay at K-State now. But also when you haven't had like a ton, it's only been two years, but again, this is significant. When you haven't had so much staff turnover, you think of a guy like Dream Dowling, that he is ingrained here now. Like it would be tougher for him to leave Manhattan, Kansas than it would have been, you know, a year ago or whatever. Uh, You think the same thing about, Ronnie Perry and York Maligi and, and Anthony Winchester and and all these guys that are in in the mix here. Austin Carr, I don't want to leave all these guys out. But basically everybody on this staff, they have been here from the get-go. And they've now been here for two years. And it's significant that they 
are ingrained here. And now you have a staff that they understand Manhattan in some ways. They certainly understand K-State, and they've also put their own spin on it that you can be successful in this when you have the ingredients of a, a supportive fan base, which we know K-State has. You have, obviously, the right head coach, which we know that K-State has. And you have this understanding and can explain what people are getting into when they come to K-State. And now you also have the final thing, and it's the big thing in college recruiting right now. You have the NIL backing this year. And so now it's, okay, we have talented freshmen here for K-State coming back for a sophomore year where, I mean, certainly Day-Day Ames, big things are expected of him now for how well he ended this past season. You're going to get you know, a, a guy like David Castillo to come in as a freshman that he has some traits that I think lend him to being probably a more immediate, not major impact. I don't want anybody to get that confused. Like he's not going to come in here and be, you know, Michael Beasley type of freshman, or even like, I, I don't know that you even want to say that he's like Dean Wade level freshman, but he is going to have some things that can get him on the floor early and he can help contribute to this team winning early on, which none of the three freshmen this past year actually did. And then obviously Doug McDaniel and whoever comes next in the portal and this this team has the opportunity moving forward to be really good. And so everything that happened here, like it's it's wild to think of what the diff, the two roads look like for K-State basketball after today. Where the road K-State is on right now looks a lot more rosy than the one that they could have been going down. And it's not just a path that could have taken them down one bad year. It could have been multiple because anytime you have to hire a head coach – you are basically taking a 50-50 chance that it doesn't work out. There are no sure things in the realm of coaching, as we've seen. We've seen numerous hires that seem like they make sense and they don't work out. I mean, certainly on the football side, I, I don't know many people that would have told you that the Scott Frost thing wasn't going to work in Nebraska. Yeah, He was successful at UCF, and he's going back to a place where he's beloved and played there and all that stuff. How, how would that not end up working out? And you can make that notion all over the place, and then that stuff just doesn't always happen. So making that next hire is always an iffy move, and you don't want to do that. And then you throw in everything else that goes on with college athletics these days. There's just so many other unknowns. Even if you get the right head coach in, it might take two years to get this right. And it would not be a fun feeling for K-State fans to go three years at the end of Bruce Weber where they don't make the tournament then you have the Elite Eight run, and then Tang down year this year, you lose him, and you're still hunting two years from now to get back to the tournament. So it, this is major for K-State long-term, but also momentum-wise. And what this does now is, at the very least, you hope that you give Tang another year, and you he can, even if he ends up leaving down the road, this job is built into being a more significant spot than it already is. I think K-State is already viewed as a good job for coaches. I think it's a matter of, can you get it up to another level and make that be something where, you know, you're not looking for the next Jerome Tang next time. Maybe you can be the one to poach an already somewhat proven guy from a decent job. Yeah, I think that that is probably the goal. Like, I, I just... I personally just keep thinking about just like how different this could have been and just feeling a lot better about the current state of everything. Now I, I ended our, our show this morning saying we might have fun next week or we might not stay tuned. Like we're, we're back on the, we're having fun train and, you know, not to get too off topic because I, I got some heat for this earlier. This is a chief shirt. It is not Arkansas red. <laughs> I didn't realize that, it, that people were, I didn't even notice earlier that you were in red. Just ha, ha, just have to point that out to everybody. Uh, but it, this is massive news for K-State. It, it's something that you have to really appreciate when it's over. Because number one, you got the outcome that you wanted. But number two, that your guy that you really believe in. Because I, I genuinely think that the only other person that might believe in Jerome Tang more than Jerome Tang and his own family is Gene Taylor. And that you got Gene Taylor's guy to stay. And yeah. I, that, that's, that's just a big deal. And anytime that you can spurn the SEC and shut them down, you always feel good about it. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think that's something that should be mentioned. We probably haven't said Gene Taylor's name enough during this process. Like Built him a statue. Yeah, we we have you know talked enough about, hey, the J- Jerome Tang staff probably had a, a big say in him staying and people around him that he's close to probably did. But Gene Taylor undoubtedly is a big reason for that. We know the affinity that Jerome Tang and really every other coach at K-State has for Gene Taylor. But this is another one of those situations where you probably think to yourself, okay, do I want to leave a situation where I think I have one of the best athletic directors possible? And obviously then Gene follows it up by coming through in some way to ensure that Jerome Tank stayed at K-State. So Gene Taylor deserves a ton of praise and everything else that goes with it. And again, I just want to tie this up by saying, there is, it's okay, I think, for some K State fans to feel a little bit bummed and hurt for how close you flew to the son of Jerome Tang leaving you for another job. Uh, but in the end, he did choose to come back, and it would have been just as easy for him to go to Arkansas. Even if money and other stuff was the same or a little bit better at K State, it still would have made sense outside of the K State bubble for Jerome Tang to leave for that job. So he still chose you. He still wants to be in Manhattan. And again, you now have a baseline. And we know that it's going to take a job better than Arkansas to get Jerome Tang to leave. And there aren't many jobs out there, realistically, that I think are better than Arkansas that are you know, going to be open in the near future. Like maybe Kentucky finally decides that they're <laughs> seriously fed up with Cal and whatever. Uh, and that happens. And look, Jerome Tang would probably be awesome at Kentucky. Uh, so, like, I'm not even, I don't even want to put that out there for people, but I just want to give some perspective and keep people positive in, in some ways. And I know somebody's out there thinking, Mason Vogt's trying to be positive. Who the heck is this guy? I'm not, I'm not positive or negative. I'm just realistic. And that's what I'm trying to get everybody else to be here is that uh, the emotions that you can have, they can go all up and down the board, but. You gotta you gotta have some real realism attached to it. And so I think that's what you get here uh with Jerome Tank staying and hopefully everybody finds it. So Drew, I will ask you, uh, because we were talking about expectations, what is your expectation, not for next season at this point, but what comes next for K-State and how they continue to build out this roster? I know that's a loaded question, so you can go as you know, refined or as general as you want to be, but uh give the people a little bit something interesting. My expectation is that K-State will have one of the better portal classes in the country. I firmly believe that, and that's me being a really big believer in Doug McDaniel, but that's also me being a big believer in that I think that this staff with the NIL backing can get just about anybody that they want. Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be real players in it right now, and we'll see how it ends up looking moving forward for K-State. So Jerome Tang returning to K-State. He will be back next season. And again, we'll, we'll probably have a lot more to talk on this in the coming days and week. Uh, and we can maybe probably even do a show where we put together. I don't know. Nah, I don't, I don't want to do this to people. So I'm not even going to say it right now. Maybe we end up doing it and you'll know about it. And maybe, maybe you'll just think that that thought is going to stay locked in the chamber. That is my head. Eventually so, we'll have our fun show too. If people are interested in that. Yeah, it'll happen at some point. I, it probably makes it a little bit easier to do it now that uh, I don't know that we're going to be getting bad news anytime soon. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Pray to Gene Taylor probably <laughs> is the best Gene thing. Taylor. Gene makes all the bad news go away for the most part. Uh, so we'll see how it goes, but that will do it for tonight. Jerome Tang, head coach of the Kansas State Wildcats for a third season coming up. I hate to say it. But uh, I, I, I got to do it. So we've gone past 29 minutes. I'll take off the professional cap, and I will just say, suck it, hogs. So for <laughs> Drew Galloway, I am Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll be back next week. Plenty of Jerome Tang coverage over at kstateonline.com for people that aren't going to tell Arkansas fans to suck it right now. I, I really do feel bad for them. I, no, this is I not- don't. Arkansas fans are weird. I wasn't going to go that far. I, I'll Maybe I should say not necessarily Arkansas fans. I feel bad for any person in general that has to go through a coaching search on April 5th because we just talked about how tough it would have been for K-State. Yeah. And that's with like 
you at least, I mean, you could spin it as K-State, like, look at the support. We already landed a transfer like Doug McDaniel, even if he wasn't going to stay. Arkansas has not been able to start anything that you need to start with an offseason right no. now. Like, And they're fortunate enough to where, you know, the backing will be there, I think, once they get their guy. But this is not a this is not a fun spot to be in. And so K-State fans should be, I mean, we joke about it, but you should seriously be thankful that that's not your school. The, the, looking for a head coach still. The only thing that they did to get their offseason started was that Musk got a transfer from UMass and knew that he was going to take him to USC. Yeah. Also, like <laughs> Musk, what do you? Why? Why did that take so long? Like we, everybody was like, "Yep, he's he's going to take one of these jobs." And this, you know, the USC job's been open for a while. Why did it take so long? Why do we have to make all this drama happen in college sports? Why can't it just be cookie cutter and easy for everybody to process? I don't know. But that'll that'll do it for us. Uh, like I said, plenty more to come in the the, the coming days on K State basketball. Also, plenty of K State football stuff. Do not forget about the football team. Uh, they're out there doing social media videos that I don't understand the trend that's going on. I didn't uh, understand it either. Okay, and Drew's Drew's like a year or two younger than me, so there you have it. Uh, nobody understands it unless you understand it, and then I guess you're just cooler than us. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Both. Thanks for watching K State Online.